All right, so I totally spaced out that I have my colonoscopy tomorrow. And so if I die, I want to let the world know that I didn't ever do any butt stuff, but I have died of butt stuff. Uh, what was it? Uh, I, the, the, this is, uh, what was it? I filmed some stuff yesterday and uh, basically takes the place of uh, Sunday sermon, uh, for lack of a better whatever. Uh, mostly my policy has been um, don't wait till Christmas or the holidays to be nice. <laughs> uh, that's one thing I learned in the Air Force uh, when I had to work nights and, you know, the the mid shift because I was the, the, you know, the new airman on board or whatever. And uh, I had to, I had to address a lot of the feelings and expectations that I had about holidays, you know, about having a day off or all this kind of stuff. And um, that, that stuff doesn't exist for me anymore. Uh, and I realized that I can, I can celebrate and, and be happy anytime I want. All I have to do is decide. So that emotions are not what you think they are. And that it really, everything comes from thoughts. So if you can control your thoughts, you can control your emotions. Okay. You don't have to feel anything if you don't want to, but you can choose to feel happy and you can choose to feel sad. Sounds weird. I know, I know it does, but it's completely true. And eventually you'll figure that out for yourself. So, but I wanted to wish everybody Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, whatever the fuck you're doing, Chinese New Year, whatever. Um, that it's all illusion and you can you can uh, celebrate and feel those things all the time you can be generous and kind and loving every moment of every day of the year you, you don't have to wait for a special occasion so uh, sometimes people take advantage of you and take advantage of that and it's important to lay down a boundary and not allow for abuse and you know somebody I think somebody was saying in the comments today they're like well all you do is this blah 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 and you walk people off your property. I was like, yeah, because I'm nice to everybody. And there's a lot of predators out there that take advantage of me. And, you know, I, I've learned to be skillful at defending myself against them. And, you know, you got to just lay down the line. And sometimes, you know, what's funny is before I film, before I even turn the camera on, I've already asked them to leave like at least twice. And then I turn the camera on because... That seems to be the only thing they respond to. And then what what amazes me is when I turn on the camera and they know they're being filmed and their behavior is still, uh, what was it, belligerent and rude and all that kind of stuff. That's what really amazes me. I'm like, wow, you're such an idiot. This is going on the internet for everybody to see and this is how you're going to choose to act? Okay. Upload it goes. So, <laughs> life is not woofers. Woofers is not life. Life is jizz. Jizz is life. Always remember that. Everybody came from a cream pie. I love you guys. Uh, here's the videos from Saturday. And uh, do something kind for someone every day. And don't, don't, none of that fucking Dr. Oz, Oprah, fucking Dr. Phil bullshit about love yourself. No, you're fine. You're fine. You don't need to love yourself. Unless it's a hand job, then you want to do the left handed reverse grip so you can use the mouse with your right hand. Talk to you later. I tell you what, if I had a billion dollars, this is what I'd be doing. Saturday morning, take the old Scooter Route 6000 out. Boom, fully loaded. Look at that shit. A broom and a rake. That's for cans, for the aluminum. It's for the trash. Oh shit, we're going to pick some shit up. It's fucking great this morning. Look at that sunshine. Oh. Alright, so last night, I cleaned up all this trash right in there. There's this cable box. I don't think it goes to anything, but I don't want to cut it. And then this bush is sticking out. I got to trim about a foot off that motherfucker. It's sticking out. It is really scenty though. I kind of like it, I have to admit. But I remember bushes like this being full of bees when I, oh shit, there is bees. When I was a kid. Sometimes you're El Wapo. He's El Wapo. And you just get sick and tired and you fucking clean that shit up. You're like, I don't give a shit whose it is. It needs to be fucking clean. Critter check clear motherfucking critter check oh look at that clean all that shit up gotta clean that up though all right so the hoarder house got cleared out 
but there's a bunch of weeds. I killed them last, uh, I think it was late summer. So, but they just been sitting there and then I finally got sick of it and put on the gloves and just stuffed it all in their fucking garbage can. Came back today to rake it up a little bit more, make it look cleaner, just nicer. All right, so that's after. Pretty good, I'll come back for that grass. So I got a, like a old fashioned, old timey, it's like, it's, it looks like a golf club, but you, it's for cutting weeds. So, and that's perfect for it. Shit, it's almost 11. Gotta open up at noon. I cleaned this up the other day. Got sick of looking at this shit. Got all those tires, those are gone. And then somebody was camping out right behind the transformer and there's a big doo-doo. And then I was taking it over to the dumpster and then the big chunk of doo-doo fell on the ground. It was gross. And then, what else? And then Sherry and I came back here. I was pulling weeds. You gotta do all that stuff, man, because th that way they know that somebody's here. They leave what's called tokens around. The critters. And then I cleaned up down there. Take a look down there real quick. Make sure there's no more critters. I cleaned up all the garbage over here. I don't remember that stick sticking down. Well, somebody's been here. Some sort of brace, maybe for a spare. And then they made some sort of spear. Motherfuckers. Dirty motherfuckers. You gotta be vigilant. Eternal vigilance. That's what that's the cost of freedom. Uh, and also just keeping homeless people away. It's gross. So I'm wrapping it up though. I did a lot of work this morning and it was funny, uh, I took Sherry out last night on a run and uh, I was out there, you know, even after dark with a flashlight pulling weeds and shit and she said, well, you know, and she's got COVID so she, she, she has trouble walking, she has trouble breathing and so she's just, you know, here to keep me company. And she goes, I get mad whenever I see people don't clean up their shit. I started laughing. She's like, what's so funny? And I said, I said, that's a form of self-pity. I said, first of all, you're not even helping. <laughs> you're just along for the ride. Second of all, uh, I'm out here doing this because for for it's like a triple win, right? It's like the, that's, that's the Elon move, the Tesla move. Is like, it's good for the environment, obviously. I'm tired of looking at it and it helps the community and I get my aggression out. Um, a lot of times I, I, I finally figured out that the, the, that's what's really great about gardening and things like that or just cleaning up trash is that uh, uh, it feels good uh, and I, I highly recommend you guys do it just you don't have to get the fucking scouts together and do a fucking service thing because those guys you got to bribe those guys with ice cream and all kinds of bullshit just to get them to get away from their fucking do they I think they don't, yeah, they don't, even, they don't even have scouts anymore so but uh, you got to get them away from the video games but uh, it feels good and, and in the end, I kind of do it for a selfish reason, which is just to feel good and have some satisfaction and be able to fix something in my life that, you know, life is super chaotic and overwhelming. It can be, depending on your perspective. And right now, Sherry's feeling that. She's feeling really overwhelmed. Her health isn't good. And, uh, and I, I keep encouraging her to, to do more. I'm like, you'll feel better. And she's like, I don't believe you. Well, she, doesn't ever, she doesn't ever verbalize it, but her behavior says, don't tell me what to do. Leave me alone. I'm like, okay. So, but, uh, and that's been frustrating for me for years is that, you know, it's, you just got to get sick and tired of sick and tired. And, and, uh, I was, I was reminded of, uh, Paul Orbison, may he rest in peace. Uh, I was super inspired by him in the nineties when I was doing Excel and, uh, and, uh, he, he, in one of his talks, he does, uh, he was talking about how when he was a school teacher and he'd see some kid getting picked on and picked on and, you know, and he just, he says, uh, he says, you know, you just hope that kid uh, hauls off and knocks the soup out of him. And, because uh, he was from Kentucky. And, um, you know, the teachers, the, their policy is to not get involved because it's best for both parties 
you know, for, for the, the, the bully to get the shit kicked out of him every once in a while so that he shows some fucking respect. And, you know, for some people, like that motorcycle guy that just passed, the only thing they, the only thing they recognize is violence. And, and so for some people, it's not for everybody, but for some people, they need the shit kicked out of them. And, uh, and then, you know, if, again, whether or not you get respect or something like that, I mean, you certainly get an attitude change. And, you know, I think that's what's behind, you know, when people say, you know, when I was a kid, you know, we'd have to go get a switch or whatever, you know, because you got discipline. It's really, that's not what you want to do. It's only when they just are persistent. And, I, and for some reason, I feel like Sherry is like that. She's one of those people. And if, I'm, I'm certainly not ever going to do that. Okay. But uh, I know a lot of women are like that, that, you know, they seem to like to be abused and ignored and mistreated. And, uh, you know, I, I, I think some of it is genetic, you know, when you look at the parents and then some of it is just, you know, fathers that didn't raise their kids right. Um, uh, no experience. Sherry and I, I woke up, well, I've been working all night, so I'm a little dizzy. And uh, so at about seven, it was still dark and I was like, hey, let's go to Waffle House. So we had a good Waffle House thing. And I remember asking her, I said, uh, I said, what was your what was your best Christmas growing up? And she, <laughs> she just, it was, of course, it was when her parents were uh, married. It was probably the probably the last Christmas while they were still married. And and uh, she was she remembering Barbie dolls and all kinds of stuff. She got a desk. It's probably right around sixth grade. And uh, I just was like in awe, awe because uh, the best Christmas I ever got was when my dad had finally uh, married his uh, girlfriend, who he got knocked up and. I think I, uh, great Christmas was fifth grade. And then uh, the best Christmas was when I got my first skateboard at uh, sixth grade because we, you know, watch Back to the Future. And then, you know, you get inspired. And then your parents are like, let's get this action sports kamikaze. And uh, that was my first skateboard. And I learned how to ride it. It was great, very empowering. But, um, and then she, and then Sherry goes, you know, what was your, what was your best Easter? And I'm all, best Easter? I'm like, the best Easter was if I didn't have to go to church, but I had to go to church every fucking Easter. And she goes, well, yeah, but what about your basket? I go, basket? We we got, uh, I said, strawberries used to come in a little pint, a little green plastic pint. And my mom would stuff most of it with green plastic grass and then put some jelly beans on top. And then uh, the, 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 the coup de gras was uh, the, what was it, cram egg, whatever, Cadbury egg. That and we get one of those, and maybe a like a like a little bit bigger bunny or something like that. And it was hollow and that was fine, and uh, I was happy to get that. Sherry's like, no, we got we got I got roller skates, I got this. I was like, what the fuck? And I go and you got they were poorer than we were. I was like, what the fuck? So I don't know. It just depends on how you spoil your kids, man. Uh, I I'm really thinking like. If you look, I, I gotta put a link to it. Uh, Elon uh, came up with a school for his kids because the, the, all of society just teaches you to be a consuming, lazy, uh, cog in the machine fucking piece of shit. And it really requires um, spirit and determination in order to escape that. Otherwise, you're just doomed to your shitty fucking job for the rest of your life and then you watch uh, the company screw you out of your pension right at the end, whether it's the military or UPS or whoever. So that, and that's how they treat you now, uh, because you know, you were a cuck the whole time. So why wouldn't you be a cuck to the end? Right? So, <laughs> uh, you know, they're, they're called beta cucks for a reason, but you know, you don't have to be an alpha to everybody. Just be an alpha in your own life, right? Just be the alpha in your, in your pack, right? If you want to listen to Cesar Milan. But uh, anyways, I'm going to head home. I got a little leak in the tire. I have to go get some slime uh, and uh, look into replacing these fucking tires anyway. I've, been, I've put a lot of miles on this Scooter Route 6000. Thanks for tuning in, guys. It's a beautiful day. I've been making woofers all night, and uh, hopefully I can get caught up this weekend and get lots of orders shipped out. Thank you for your patience and your support. Have a Merry Christmas. I, I just got off the phone with uh, Larry Van Sickle at uh, Recoil, and... Uh, uh, he, he and uh, his spouse is going to uh, UK and uh, they told me, you know, going to have a great time and, and fuck yeah, Larry deserves it. So, but um, uh, yeah, I, I was trying to think of like, you know, would I ever go on 
vacation and I'm like, fuck no. Like, I don't even feel like I earn vacations. I don't, I don't feel like I, I even earn a day off. And then, you know, my wife, she's like, oh, I would love, I'm like, I'm sure you would. <laughs> Uh, again, it's just an attitude and a, and a, a perspective. You know, I, I, I want to do bigger things in my life and, and the way to get things done and, and the way, again, to it's cathartic. And that's really the reason why I do these videos. It's, it's, it's cathartic to talk to someone and this is counseling. Picking up this trash is therapy. It's the, it's the most effective therapy I can probably do. And it doesn't cost me anything except my time. So, and I've been up all night, so I'm kind of loopy and I wanted to get away from the shop for a minute and, uh, cause I'm tripping over fucking subwoofers. And, uh, so, but I, I'm really grateful for you guys and I love you. I, you know, even the, even the trolls and the haters, you know, uh, Google seems to be a really good, uh, filter for that. They seem to filter the fuck out of them. So, and then I love it when you guys compliment me, they're like, oh man, you have no filter. And I'm like, yeah, man, you got to get the shit out. You got to get the shit out of that poopy butthole right? Everybody's got a poopy butthole, but nobody wants to talk about it. That seems wrong, right? The most important things in life are shitting and fucking. So let's talk about them. I love you. Take care of each other. Bye. Well, I realized I didn't, I didn't finish two thoughts. One was when I was talking to Sherry last night and, and I told you that she got mad that other people don't clean up their shit. And I said to her and, and earlier to you that that's a form of self-pity. And then the way that that's a form of self-pity is because she's getting upset over something that happens anyway, that happens no matter what. So it's up to, it's up to her and me to do something about it. So, but just getting mad about something that happens in the world, that's crazy, right? That's like, just like the time that you've been watching this video, like a thousand people have died. <laughs> do you feel bad? No, you should, and you shouldn't. It, it, it's just part of life. So, <laughs> but, uh, what was the, uh, the other one? Oh, I forgot the other one. The other one, well, a, another one that I wanted to talk to you about was also the, the series of the videos. Um, when I turned, uh, I think 45, um, there, there was something that I learned in Omega Vector, uh, about, um, Deciding the way that you want to live also means deciding the way that you're going to die. Okay. And, and the idea is that you prepare for your death. And if you can, you want to make it count. That's, that's really what it is. If you can, you do your best to make it count for something to, to make a dent in, in the, in overwhelming chaos that is life. Okay. And, and on our society and in life and, you know, for all time in history, if you can, you want to just make the biggest dent and mark that you can, uh, hopefully for good. That's some people make a, a negative dent. So, <laughs> but, uh, uh, prepare for your death. Make sure you have uh, good term insurance, you know, through a reputable company, somebody that's going to pay out, make sure, uh, that, uh, you have, uh, either an organization or, or a human being chosen as your benefactor uh, or beneficiary, sorry, beneficiary. Um, make sure they're prepared for for the, the payout that they're going to get. Um, and just so you know, uh, at least, don't, you know, don't take ask, ask an accountant or a tax lawyer. But um, from what I understand, uh, when you receive a payout like that, it is non taxable. So but if it is. Uh, set up a church and then uh, leave it to the church. Um, and then that way um, nobody can come after it. And when I say nobody, what I'm talking about is the state, the government. Uh, sometimes the government will come after you for, uh, or come after your estate. Uh, for so they'll, they'll claim owed taxes and bullshit like that. But a lot of times it's just, it's just greedy, greedy motherfuckers. So, but um, shoot. I, re I remember now. Uh, chaotic world. Uh, that's Jordan Peterson's word words. Um, the, the reason for doing tasks. So when you play candy crush, the reason it feels good is because you feel like you're doing something. And that's true of any video game. That's the reward is you feel like you're accomplishing something and it's a trick. It's, it's an illusion. You're not accomplishing anything. You're just, you know, if you look at it from a third person perspective, 
you know, means meaning someone coming in and looking at you watching, you know, you know, porn or video games or whatever it is, it, it, you're just consuming time. That's all you're doing. And so if you actually do something like yard work or help a neighbor or uh, something, I'll tell you what, you'll feel much better uh, afterwards than when you play Candy Crush for 20 minutes to an hour or whenever you run out of lives. And believe me, I've spent a lot and burned enough, enough time on that bullshit. So I, I do my best lately in the past uh, six months to a year to, to not do that. Um, just because it's like I could be on my phone working uh, or answering texts or, or making lists. I make endless lists. Uh, typically, I, I do it in my head. And I remember there was a, I think it was Comedians in Cars getting coffee, with Jerry Seinfeld, talking about um, how silly people's goal lists are and and you know all those kinds of lists he goes he says well there's a certain point where you get in life where you just do it <laughs> you know like uh you know you want to play madison square garden you just do it you know if, if that's what you want to do so um but uh again it, it, it's all illusion and it's it, the idea of a list of course is to keep you focused because when you don't know what to do or you find yourself uh you know bored or a uh, god oh my god if you find yourself bored get busy get some responsibilities um but uh uh the point is doing something productive it helps the world it helps your immediate environment and uh you feel better and that's that's what we're that's what we're it seems like that's what we're programmed to do just saying so i talked yesterday about gender roles and how Nature seems to have already determined that. I mean, you can argue with nature, but one of the things they've observed about humans is that they feel most uh, happy, satisfied when they're working towards a goal. When they're, when they're, and physical, physical especially, when you're physically doing something. You know, virtual is sometimes it's okay, like if there's some sort of uh, VR, like the Matrix, where you know, you can organize a bunch of stuff and you're actually doing something for other people, that's fine. That does not exist right now. And so uh, the best thing you can do is, uh, you know, fucking help people with their groceries, fucking pick up trash. There's so many wonderful things that you can do in life. And I, it was funny, the other night we were uh, critter, critter cruising, uh, was it critter checking, and uh, so was some weirdo, and he was a young guy, he was like in his 20s, um, you know, face covered with sores and, you know, I'm sure full of drugs. And uh, he's like, so, so you just do this out of the kindness of your heart? And uh, of course, I said, uh, no, fuck face. Get the fuck out of here. We don't like you here. I didn't say that. What I really said was, sure. I just, I didn't, I didn't want to argue with him. I didn't want to uh, do anything. I didn't want to agree with him. When really I'm out there pulling in carts and uh, picking up trash for, because it's, it's my way of getting stress out. And uh, I don't get much exercise. And so that's, it's good exercise, fucking pulling weeds and all that kind of shit, sweeping up, picking up broken cinder blocks, throwing them in the dumpster. That's, that's good exercise. So, but, um, I think that was it for today. Um, I got clients coming over. They called me already. And, um, since I got you here, this is a sundown essay series. Um, we put the new frame on, I think this was a 12. Um, I forgot to show you the spacer that we did. So a lot of these spacers in the first gen stuff, they came in a 120 millimeter bolt pattern. And what I did was I took them to the machine shop and had them make it into an oval. So that way it would fit 120 millimeter and 127 millimeter, which was the two standards. So, but um, yeah. So, and I was just showing that you could do that yourself. You don't have to have it. But I had like, oh, I think like 10 or 11 laying around that I couldn't use because they had the wrong pattern on them. And I was like, you don't really need to drill a new hole. You just need to make it a little oblong. So that way it uh, works for both. And so, and I did one of those for this. Uh, they use the seven inch, seven and a half, I think a seven and a half, and seven and a quarter, whatever. They use the lower spider landing, just so you know. There you go. And then I even have the sundown terminals. They say sundown. Where is it at? There we go. Sundown. And uh, some people like that. Put the boots on there. I don't have the or original cone, so I'm gonna have to do something else. I gotta figure that one out. So, 
Sometimes people like my hybrids, some people don't. It doesn't look original. I'm like, well, then go to China and go to Amazon and buy that. It's like, fucking weirdo. So, but the price of these has really gone up. Uh, somebody was asking me about a good $200 shipped sub, and I picked the uh, Scar EVL. Right now, they're on sale at Scar's website. I make zero money from telling you that, but for 200 bucks shipped, you get an EVL 12. That's a pretty good deal, and you can get it in dual 2 or dual 4. Um, the reason why I sent somebody there was because I can't, I don't, I can't keep up. I, I, I've been, I stayed up all night and I've been working late, uh, all this last month and I just can't keep up. So, um, I'm going to have to do a, um, I'll probably do something like, uh, that, that green one, something that's pretty hardy. Um, I get, it, it depends on what China has. Uh, oh, the other one I had, uh, is it over there? Where's it at? Oh, it's over there. I got a Twisted Sounds. That red one, uh, there is a Twisted Sounds. And then that's a VXF. Uh, it was a VXF 12 or turning into an 18. So both of those are spec. Boop, boop. So they're available. And uh, if anybody wants to buy them, I think I made them both dual two, which is pretty popular. Is there any more spec? No. Oh, the green ones, the uh, green ones are getting uh, the new coil. This is the new two and a half. And so is the twist. Yep, see, this is the Twisted Sounds. This doesn't stand for Training Surprise, which is a great website, by the way. It's one of my most favorite comedic websites. I don't think it exists anymore, but you can go to trainingsurprise.com and uh, it takes you to other trans related. Uh, Mm, I don't want to say fetish, but you know, particulars. So, but the, there used to be a website called Tranny Surprise and it was one of my favorite sites. Of course, it's not a comedy site. It's a porn site. However, I thought it was hilarious because, uh, every scenario was always, um, some guy meets a, he's out usually looking for hookers. He's out looking for hot chick hookers and he sees this chick with big fake tits and, you know, big lips and all that stuff. And he's like, Hey, what's up, baby? Let's go to your hotel room. And she's like, all right, let's go. And, uh, and then, you know, they get back there and he starts making out with her and he's sucking on her tits. And then, and then the hooker's like, oh, I got to tell you something. <laughs> Training surprise. I got a big dick. And then she pulls out like, you know, usually a big seven inch dick. And he's like, oh, that's gross. Oh, I was kissing a dude. Oh. And, then, and then she, and then she's like, well, that kind of hurts my feelings. Or I think some of the other lines were, um, <laughs> what was it? Well, you already paid your money. There's no refunds. And then he goes, and he, he, he only lasts about two seconds. He goes, ah, you're right. And then he starts chugging on the cock. <laughs> so and then, of course, you know the ending. But uh, I, I just thought that was hilarious. That's so funny. I don't know why more people don't find that hilarious. But I think a lot of people have uh, difficulty talking about uh, sex and trans and things like that. We're all human beings. Uh, uh, we all just, you know, what? who was it? I forgot his name. Oh. He's a comedian. He used to get arrested a lot in the 50s for profanity. They feature him on uh, The Marvelous Miss Maisel. Oh, somebody will tell me. Oh, that was the other correction. Um, it was not Fear Farm that I helped out. It was Schnepp Farms. Fear Farm is on the West Valley, and that's my friend Adam who used to run that. Um, and it's moved a couple times. I think they sold the land because it got so expensive. They're like, we'll, we'll finally take the money. Um, but yeah, it was Schnepp Farms and it was the zombie apocalypse and they, they rigged up a bunch of, um, hayride carts, also known as cotton carts because they would harvest cotton here. Not, not so much hay, but hay for the cows, but, um, but they, uh, rigged them up with like benches and then they put speakers all over them. And that's what I was in charge of. And me and Andrew went out there a couple of times and rigged them up and they had generators underneath and like one or two batteries and amps and. And then they played like, it's so funny because Schnepp Farms is, they're a bunch of Mormons. And so their idea of like, you know, heavy metal was like ACDC. <laughs> like that's elevator music, bro. So, but, uh, um, yeah, they said they, well, they, they first, they played like, you know, let the bodies hit the floor. And, uh, they, they got some feedback from clients that they were like, this, that's kind of a little rowdy for, you know, children. And you're like, well, you, you brought your children to a zombie apocalypse where you shoot, people dressed up as zombies uh, with like protective clothing and you shoot them with paintballs, you know? So that was the idea. But anyways, 
<laughs> that's what I did with Arizona Audio. That was the big project. And uh, I got paid and it was great. And then I looked and I, I took a fucking loss. And I was like, well, that's good on taxes. And it's not good for my pocketbook. So, but anyways, uh, this is for uh, a different Andy. It's Andy. And he's my phone under 24 inch dick because he, he was kind of, I, well, I was late. But so, but he was kind of mean to me, but he came back for more. And so I'm making him some 24s right now. <laughs> and he also wanted, uh, I had an extra SA motor and he has another one that needs reconed. And so I made uh, another coil kit. And so that way, when he brings it in, I can do it real quick. And then uh, uh, it, it's good to go through a dry run or at least a single run before you figure out how to solve problems. That's one of the hardest part is I don't remember everything how I solved it last time. And that's why a lot of times I'll ask you guys for pictures. Um, uh, because sometimes when I look at that, I go, oh yeah, I, I updated it. And I don't, again, I don't keep track of any of this stuff. I don't write it down. It's all in my head. And, but that's another reason why I do the videos. So, um, oh yeah, back to death. So that was why I do the videos. It's number one to document my thoughts that, cause that helps big time. Uh, but it's also to, um, I know I'm not going to have kids until I'm about 80 or uh, even a hundred. And so um, I, I want my, in case I die before then, uh, for some reason, some tragic accident, um, uh, I, I want my knowledge to be out there and, and you know, seething through your veins and your minds and growing and, and uh, you know, populating the world. So, and that's, Jordan Peterson talked about that. He says, when you can learn to read, write and articulate yourself, that is one of the most powerful things you can ever do. The most powerful. And I highly recommend, uh, you, you know, even if you have a low IQ, you didn't go to college, whatever, it doesn't matter. Learn, learn, learn how to do that stuff. And you don't have to go to college to fucking do that. Just fucking start reading books, studying, stay focused, have goals. You know, it really helps your life. It, it really helps you feel like it's okay to die. And that's and when you're living your fullest or living very close to it or even even just pursuing it. When you when that time comes, you'll be OK with it. It's OK. And uh, uh, you, you can let go. You're like, well, I, I you know, I got 300 YouTube videos up and <laughs> a bunch of people impregnated with my ideas. So, you know, I'm good. And uh, it's it, it would make death uh, a lot more powerful and um, effective if I can use that. Uh, to again push my agenda of awesomeness which is again it's not an awesomeness of me at all i i'm 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 poor i i i i i do my best to be humble when i am cocky it's 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 uh it's a comedic exaggeration uh i think i i think that's funny uh i've told you before i think when when stupid people are really confident <laughs> that is one of my most favorite things but um, I do this to show you that anybody can do this. And I, and I do this to show you very specific steps to take in order for you to, to take control of your life and, and pass on your legacy, even if it's a small little grain of gold to someone else or a future generation. And that's how we get better as a species. And that's, that goes back to George Adair of Omega Vector and his dream of uh, raising humanity. So that's what his life goal was, is to raise the consciousness, the awareness of humanity. And I hope to carry that torch for him uh, because he inspired me and, and uh, he impregnated me with ideas. And it takes time for them to grow and for me to understand what he was saying at the time. So, but uh, I'll put a link again to George and George's work, uh, Omega Vector, whatever. I, I, I go back and review the video too, and then I... I post links. So, and if I forget anything, please remind me in the comments. Thank you. I love you. Bye. I remember I wanted to show off Woody's 12s. So we're doing SPL 12s for Woody. Um, what I decided on doing was uh, extra long coil, um, mostly because we have the room for the excursion. So it's not going to bottom out. If anything, it'll bottom out here on the landing um, when the spider comes down and hits it. So some of these also have very tight uh, gaps. And this is a, actually a pretty thin coil. This is the one that I got from China. I think it's 70 or 80 millimeter, I forget. Uh, I'll put the specs and the pricing up. Um, again, this will probably go in the store that I want to get next year. Um, I'll do a fresh start over the new year 
and probably get a website and do some other stuff. There's some other projects too that I wanted to do. Um, we wanted to set up uh, like a dental plan that people can pay $10 a month. And then uh, that covers uh, two cleanings, polishing, inspection, and x-rays twice a year for 10 bucks a month. Um, and then we want to do that uh, with a co-sponsor with other churches, uh, one through the Church of Zeotology, one through Kaimi Pono Ministries, and then also through the E Foundation. Um, let's see, what else? Oh, preparing for death. That was the other one. Uh, just so I want to document it here uh, that um, uh, my body is just my body. It's not me. And that, again, that's why I want to make these videos to, so that my knowledge and my thoughts continue on for as long as they can. And uh, I feel like they're coming from the, the, the highest place, the highest good that I can that I can find right now. Um, in some senses, you, you want to simply be a conduit for God, for lack of a better word, or a conduit for whatever it is, multiverse, whatever the fuck, it, you know, whatever it is, wherever my thoughts come from. Um, but uh, as far as my body goes to get disposed of, uh, no funeral, uh, no memorial, none of that shit. Um, I want my uh, memories to be passed on through this and through my work. My work is the thing that I can leave behind, not me. I can't last forever, even though I, like I said, I plan to live to about 150. Um, it's it's pro programmable RNA uh, is what it is. And Elon talked about it one time in a, uh, a seminar or whatever, something like that. But um, what was the other one? Death. So disposing of the body is, is very messy. Uh, cremation right now is typically the least expensive. Uh, but that's still a lot. Uh, and it's also really bad for the environment. Um, some people are full of garbage, like especially if you have a memorial and a funeral um, and, they, you know, they want to show off the body and uh, they fill you with a formaldehyde and then you, you know, stick that in the ground. That's not very good for the ground. And you got to buy a coffin. That's expensive. You got to buy a plot uh, and they don't tell you any of this. And then, they, you know, a lot of times they prey on you if you're um, uh, a, ben a beneficiary of an insurance plan, you just go, oh, that's fine, 10 grand, 20 grand, 40 grand, that, oh, that's fine, I'm getting $100,000, I'm gonna get a million, million dollars, whatever. So it's not a big deal. Wrong, that's that you could be spending that money on uh, cash flow, you're gonna be investing it, you could um, help a lot of people with that. Um, and so you can build tiny homes and, and call them jack shacks. Remember that, I can, I'll go through that one again. But um, the way that I want my body to be disposed of, uh, I actually wanna invest in this and bring it to small communities that, um, and again, put them, what you do is you put them on a payment plan of like something like $5 a month, $10 a month, uh, and you make it really close to free. Uh, and what it is, is it's a alkaline process. You, they put you in a, a giant, well, they put your body, not you. They put your body after you're dead, of course, uh, in a, uh, it's like a, um, you know how the, the you know, like how you see them on TV where the body comes out of the refrigerator and then they just goes back in and, um, what was it? It's, it's basically a tray like that, but it's a, a large, probably a three foot or a four foot, depending on, you know, if you want to accommodate for fat people, uh, four foot, uh, cylinder and you slide in, the whole thing is made of welded stainless steel. And then what happens is inside there, uh, it heats up and it's pressurized and then it, it uses a caustic um, alkaline to break down the, the flesh. And what you're left with is any like, you know, like your molar, like, no, yeah, like the fillings in your teeth, anything that doesn't break down uh, over that time. And it, uh, again, it's high pressure, high heat, um, and it's just alkaline being washed over your flesh. And uh, basically what's left is your bones and your bones will be really pretty, pretty, pretty pearly white. And uh, you can give those to the family if you want, and they can crush them up or something like that or whatever, or you can put it on a shelf and make a little talking thing, whatever you want to do. And, um, but that's, it's, it's very, very affordable. And then the, with the alkaline solution, after it's been saturated with the, the flesh and the toenails and the wiener and all that stuff in the butthole, uh, it just goes down the drain. That's it. And it's disposed of through the sewer, uh, or a septic system if you have septic, but, um, um, uh, much, much cheaper, much, much better on the environment. Um, and, and your, uh, the caustic of course can be neutralized with, um, uh, an acid or something else uh, on the other side of the pH. But um, that's it. I, I, I'll, I'll find, I read an article about this. This was probably a couple of years ago. And I, I want to do that. And it, you may even have to build your own tank because again, 
the funeral business never goes away. <laughs> it's one of those staples in life. Uh, and if you ever watch the, the series Six Feet Under with Dexter in it, uh, there's always lots of money available for it. Uh, and, and usually, you know, big corporations make money off of you. So you live your whole life and they just pimp you, pimp you, pimp you, pimp you, cheat you out of your uh, retirement. Uh, and then you die and then they make money off of your death. So um, then that's where they've positioned themselves uh, to just harvest humans. Um, of course, I have my feelings about that, but that, that's the way it is right now. So um, what you can do, though, is minimize your footprint and minimize your cost and minimize. And you can think about all these things just like uh, was it, uh, was it Aristotle, Plato, one of those guys. Um, he was, you know, he was he, he was reflecting to people uh, basically their hypocrisy and their bullshit. And, stuff like that. and then they go, all right, enough, bro. You got to either uh, something, whatever, face the uh, what was it? Bust a deal, face the wheel, you know, something like that. And then they're like, he's like, well, I'd rather fucking die. Fuck you. And then he, he uh, what he did, though, is before he died, he he cleared out his bowels, right? Because when you die, you poop on yourself and you pee on yourself and all that kind of stuff. And it's kind of gross. So that's another preparation of mindfulness and, and consideration for others. Even in your death, you want to be considerate. So um, I think that was it. All right. I'll let you get to work. I love you. Get to work. Go do something else. You're, you're fucking watching videos all day. Bye.